This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the place to go for all of your website needs. I'm often asked in the comments section of our Leica videos, which one do you prefer, the Leica M11 or the M10 Monochrome? To which I usually answer, well, I bought the M11. Whereupon there is usually a back and forth, usually beginning with the commenter's assertion of the M10 Monochrome's superior low light performance. To which I usually respond, I understand, fair enough, but hey, to each his own. And I place a higher priority on resolution, retention of color information, and workflow. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and today I'm going to explain and show you why I answer the way I do. All in a photograph for three, and in less than 10 minutes, starting now. First, see for yourself. Let's start with these two images side by side, both shot at ISO 25,000 with my Voigtlander Apo Lanthar 50mm f2. All I've done to the M11 image is desaturated, no presets involved. The monochrome is straight out of camera. The hard reality is that while the M10 monochrome absolutely slays the M11 at high ISO, fair enough, no newsflash, the M11 absolutely slays the M10 monochrome for detail, noticeable even at high ISO, that I did not expect. And at base ISO, which is where I much prefer to shoot because of dynamic range. The M11 with the right glass simply resolves out of all proportion to its humble 35mm origins, even out resolving classic 6x6 medium format film. No sweat. But you know what? I actually don't mind the noise at ISO 25,000 in black and white. Although, in color, yeah, okay, that's another story. Feh. But notice that I did not say the M10 monochrome is better in low light. This is because I often shoot in very low light, say blue hour, and stick to base ISO for maximum dynamic range using very long exposures. Second, I prioritize the way I do because A, as a street photographer, I like to print my urban landscapes big, where corner-to-corner -corner sharpness and resolution matter most in my experience. I want to share the textures and nuances that I see in real life. B, because it is the nature of street photography that one has to carry and schlep what one shoots with for hours on end, I prefer small, light, and unobtrusive kit. And I use resolution to crop the crap out of an image rather than dealing with or carrying longer and heavier glass. See, I like what I can do in post on the way to converting a color capture into a black and white image courtesy of color channel information. D, sometimes I prefer the final image in color and I'd rather not have to carry two separate cameras for that purpose. And E, the differences in workflow are significant for my style of work from one, the bigger battery and more efficient circuitry of the M11 to two, the ability to remove the battery or SD card without futzing with the bottom plate even with the new optional grip attach. Three, the ability with that grip to attach directly to an Arca Swiss clamp without the need for a QR plate. Or four, use that relocation of the quarter 20 tripod socket to its proper location in line with the lens's optical axis if one wishes to use a different style of QR plate. Five, not having to remove battery or SD card actually at all because of the USB-C port. Six, the luxury of not needing an SD card at all, courtesy of 64 gigabytes of permanently installed internal memory. Seven, the ability to assign ISO to the rear scroll wheel because I set exposure manually for every shot. This makes a big difference. Eight, a new VisaFlex superior to the Type 20, specifically for manual focus and framing. Finally, third, you keeping up with me? I don't think there's any higher recommendation than spending one's own hard-earned cash on gear, so my answer about spending my own hard cash is not flippant at all. And while there are differences in tonality between the two sensors straight out of camera, the value of those differences is utterly subjective. And if you or I want to, we can make output from the M11 look like the output from the M10 monochrome. At least, at lower ISOs. Which is why, in the end, you saw this coming. 
It's all about use cases and personal preferences. Horses for courses, your mileage may vary. You say tomato, I say tomato, you get the idea. It's all good. And we should all have such problems. That is the definitive answer to the general question, my definitive answer, definitive only for me, or for those of us for whom my answer resonates deeply. Stop watching me, go out and shoot. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From custom domains to beautiful websites using their easily customizable templates that you can have up and running in minutes, e-commerce, email and email marketing, SEO, analytics and scheduling, Squarespace does it all and has done it for us for the last six years. If you are a small to mid-sized business in any industry, Squarespace is the place to go for all of your website needs. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash you for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code Hugh at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, join the conversation in the comment section below because this is an exceptional audience. If you'd like help with a portfolio review, gear selection, finding or honing your artistic voice, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one mentoring video called Via Zoom at 3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, please consider supporting our work by using the no cost to you affiliate links down below, sending us coffee money via PayPal, or most especially joining us on Patreon links down below as well. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.